Good evening, Good evening from, from New York. York. I'm, I'm Selwyn Collins, your host of CWS Conversations with Selwyn. Thank, thank you for joining us. us. And those, those of you who are joining us for the first time, a very special thank you. CWS, CWS is about having conversations with people about, about their journey and how they're, they're using their gifts and talents to help us, to help others. others. So, so I'm always, I always feel privileged, privileged and honored when, when I find someone who's using, using their gifts and talents in a very special way. way. Our, Our guest tonight is Kristen Fraser from the British Virgin Island and a fashion designer. Kristen was born and raised on the beautiful island of Tortola, British Virgin Island. She's a third generation in a family of women whose keen eyes for color and purity of design, I would say, have always been coupled with a direct sense of fashion forward style. While interning for companies Carolina, Carolina Herrera, and BCBG Max Azria, I hope I pronounced it that correctly, in the spring of 2006, the tantalizing thought of designing our own collections and one day owning and operating our own design studios evolved from a sweet daydream to a very real and a distinct sense of destiny. I'll take a short break and when I return, I'll introduce you to Kristen Fraser. to me is Kristen Fraser. Kristen, good evening. Good evening, Selwyn. How are you? I am fine. fine. Welcome, Welcome to CWS. CWS. Thank you for having me. Finally. Finally, finally right? <laughs> finally. Kristen, why do you believe the world was given this opportunity to have you and in this time? Oh, well, uh, that goes way back, way back. Um, when you come from a family that's driven, that's hardworking, that's focused, that's determined, and that's talented. Um, I think it was just, you know, I was it was inherited and it just came in the bloodline. It was automatic and it had to happen. Um, I had to do design. I had to do what I loved, um, and that was uh, being a fashion designer. So it was it was to happen naturally. In, in one, one word, or, or rather, rather, if, if one, one word could. could Give, give us, us a, a glimpse, glimpse into the world, world of Kristen. Kristen. What, what do you, you believe that, that word, word would be? Let's see. Driven. I, I like, like that. that. I, I really, really do. do. <laughs> well, I <laughs> want to say congratulations on being awarded the Caribbean, Caribbean Excellence in Fashion and Pioneer of the, of the Year Awards. Thank you what so much. What can you tell us about those awards and, and, and what, what it feels like, like knowing you have been awarded for your work? Well, both the awards, um, I got those I got those awards uh, this year. This year, one was in June and one was in November this month. Mm -hmm. um, I got the award in June for uh, from Carib Nation, Award of Excellence in Fashion uh, in Washington, D.C. And I actually got an email 
in early February explaining the details of the award, why I received the award, um, and what basically would come out of uh, getting the award. And it was an honor to be able to get such an email. It was an honor from Carib Nation, which is a nonprofit organization. And they, you know, they have this event every single year where they honor Caribbean uh, fashion designers. And being that I had my company for six years, pretty much six years in, it was it was truly an amazing feeling to know that your work is appreciated not only on a local level, not only on a regional level, but on an international level and to be recognized for that achievement with specializing in swimwear um, and resort wear is is a great accomplishment in, in itself. You know, I really, really was happy to be honored uh, at that uh, ceremony. And it was actually a fashion show coupled with the ceremony. So I not only got the award, but everyone got to see um, uh, some of my designs come down the runway at the same time. So it was quite, quite an amazing experience. And if I could do it all over again and get another award next year, I would. <laughs> um, Kristen, if, if you were not a fashion, fashion designer, designer, what would, would you have liked your, your career, career to have been? been? I probably would have been on Broadway. I am a very, very um, ambitious person. I am very, very animated. And um, I'm, I'm very very active in, in all areas of my life. And um, while I'm not, when I'm not designing rather, I'm either acting in a play or singing with a group or playing in a band or just being very active outdoors and indoors. And so I could have, I could envision myself on Broadway in New York, possibly, why not? What was, what was it, it like growing up in Tortola, Tortola British Virgin Islands, Islands at the ages, ages of nine, nine and 16? 16? Nine and 16. Oh, you're carrying me way back. <laughs> um, well, I can tell you, I can carry it even further back, and that will lead up to, to um, 9 and 16. But I, I'm from the western end of the island, Zion Hill West End, to be exact. And the entire hill was the Frasers. Um, it was very family-oriented. Um, but I was always, always sewing um, I was always draping and I was always pattern drafting and I didn't even know I was doing these things. And while my mother at the time was a seamstress, I was always in her sewing room, taking advantage of everything, of every opportunity, um, of all the time. And yes, I was a, a normal kid um, playing with everything and going to the beach and doing everything else. But I also still found time to to sew and be creative and read things and, and learn things and pin things together and see what would work, what fabrics would work together. And this is all at the age of seven. So you can imagine at the age of nine, I was literally um, making my own headpieces, making my own little skirts, um, everything you could think of I was pretty much making. And by the time I hit high school, this is 12 going forward, I was making my own school uniforms and other uniforms as well. So. My summers were busy making uniforms, um, and I had a, a good little job there going for myself. So it was a fun time, fun time. How would, How would you say, say your parents, parents have shaped who you are, are today? Well, uh, both my parents have been very, very supportive and very, very encouraging from day one. You know, when you can have parents that recognize um, your craft or recognize that you actually have a talent and that you're passionate about it and you're serious about it and you want to take it to the next step, um, then, you know, comes that aspect of, of, of giving that support in every way, shape and form um, as much as possible. And I had that growing up and it, it's, it, it's taken me um, further than I could even imagine. And to be able to have that you know, solid foundation. It really, really has helped to shape and mold me into where I am and what I am today. So I'm very, very proud of that and very, very happy and blessed to have the kind of parents that I have. So, so what, what, what kind, kind of student, student was, was Kristen, Kristen at the age of 13? And what, what do you miss, miss most about being 13? 13? <laughs> I was very rambunctious. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was actually a very... Um, I got bored easily. I got bored easily because I was so interested in everything you could think of. Everything that you can think of I was interested in. Um, I dipped my hand into everything. Fashion, sports, arts, um, choir, band, everything you can think of. I was a part of the newspaper club. I was a part of everything because I wanted to be involved in everything and to learn a little bit about everything so that when I 
grew older, I can really set foot into what I really, really wanted to do. And I, I was very rambunctious and I was, I wasn't a, a, um, what do you call a, a, a bad school child. I was just very, very bored. And, um, when the teacher would give me two pillows to sew, I'm already on the fifth pillow you know, and, and the semester is not even over. So I had, I had, um, I gave the teachers a challenge, but it was a good challenge in a very good way. <laughs> Who would you say you became at age 21? Age 21. Hmm. Just after I got my associates in arts from the local college here um, called H. Lavity Style Community College, I had just moved um, away to Tampa, Florida, and um, I decided that I wanted to pursue fashion in its full effect and to develop on my craft and to learn more about not just fashion, but about the business side, about the marketing side. And at 21, I'm going to be real honest, just like other 21-year-olds when you go to college and you jump from a small island of 30,000 people to a state that has hundreds of thousands of people, you know, it, it's a big jump. And... Um, uh, again, with me being having the kind of personality that I have, I dapped in everything. I wanted to learn about the culture. I wanted to learn about the food. I wanted to learn about the fashion. You know, I was amazed at at, at my teachers um, that were the lecturers for me in, in in my school. You know, all their different experiences. And my school was a twenty four hour school. So imagine a twenty one year old. You'd think that I would be out partying all night every single night. But I was actually in school doing research, draping new things, sewing, doing all the things that I love to do, all because it was a 24-hour school. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Well, why, why though? I mean, what, what, what kept, kept you there? there? Where, Where did, did you, you get, get this, this, this sense, sense of um, responsibility and maturity, maturity from? from? Well, um, it, it goes back. Everything always goes back um, to the roots. My grandmother actually opened a shoe and fabric store in 1962. And from the age of maybe five or six, I was in that store um, every single day, pretty much uh, up until today, where I'm now one of the managers. But I had my my um, my training, my upbringing um, from looking at my grandmother and my mother and my uncles and my aunts that would be in the store. Um, they would teach me the ropes. I would be helping customers. So the customer service I learned right off the bat. And I'm a very friendly, outgoing, open person. So it didn't. It wasn't hard for me to be social. Um, and I pretty much got my my full experiences from sewing from the beginning stages to now from my grandmother, Miss um, Ruth Clover Anthony, who's now deceased. But she definitely pay, played an intricate part um, in molding me um, in where I am today. So. You know, I love to ask this, this, this next question about this following question about people's um, parents, their father and mother. But I want to I want to insert your grandmother, grandmother there because you mentioned her and what other role she played in your life. Right. If you were to eavesdrop the three of them, your grandmother, your mother, and your dad, telling a stranger about you, what do you think each of them would be saying? How would they describe you? <laughs> My grandmother would probably say, and and you'd have to excuse me, I will speak in my dialect, in the accent, yeah? Go ahead. Um, my grandmother would probably say, you see she? Look out for her, Anna. Look out for her. She's a lot of work, but she's a good child. Look out for her. She's on the rise. I could see my grandmother saying that. Um, my mother, uh, she wouldn't be so blunt. She would be a little bit more reserved, and she'll probably say, well, that's my daughter. What can I say? Um, she's destined to who to to what she's destined for. She's destined to pretty much be what she is and do what she wants. And I love her regardless. So have fun with her. Um, and my dad would probably be like exactly like this. And I kid you not, he'd probably be. That's my child. I support her one hundred percent. Whatever she wants to do, I support her. That's it. And that's it. So I. <laughs> Literally, that's probably how you would be. <laughs> you, you're, you're young. You're, you're a young, young fashion designer. designer and, you know, you're, you're moving up the, the, the ladder in the fashion industry very fast and, and furious, I would say. These three people that, I, that you just described, your, 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 your grandmother, your mother, and your, your dad, as a businesswoman, as a designer, and someone who 
managers manages, manages people, people or, or, or you, know, you know manages how you present your your, your, your work, work to the world. world. Mm -hmm. When, when you, you are either, either one, one of those things, things which, which one, one of those personalities, or what have you drawn from each of them, them that, that helps you, do, do you believe that helps you through, through the day, or when you were a business person, person did you, you know, know, do you think, think about, about your grandmother, grandmother um, when, when you are being creative, creative is, it that your, is it your mom or your dad? Give Can us I a glimpse of that. Right. Well, I take a little bit from all three of them. Um, and they're all three so they're so different in their own right. Um, my grandmother, she was the kind of person that would give and give and give again. You know, she would have a dime in her wallet, in her purse. And if somebody needed it more than her, she would give it. And I think that's where I get that from. You know, I am a giver. If I can help you in any way, shape or form, I would do it. Um, and if there were any problems, if there were any problems ever, uh, big or small, um, she would always just sing her favorite song or say a quick prayer, breathe out and keep going. And sometimes when I'm in the store, Clover's, um, and I'm having that, that, that situation, whether it's good, bad, or in between, sometimes I, because I have a, a literal picture mounted in the store with her picture and her bio, and I have to look at that and then I'm reminded, okay sing your favorite song or say your favorite quote or, you know, say a quick prayer and just breathe out and just start over, you know, and she helps to keep me calm pretty much. Her characteristics have been embedded in me from being raised up, um, from being, from growing up with her basically. And those have been embedded in me. And I, I am grateful for that. And my mother is, is like I said, she's very reserved and very, very, very humble, very humble. She has, had so many good accomplishments and great accomplishments in her life, but one would never know because she's just so humble with it. And I told my mom when I started my company in 2008, you know, one of the things that I don't want to have happen should or when I become um, a name or a household name or a branded name for my country and, and for the Caribbean, I don't want to get, you know, big headed or become very proud or un cloud 15, you know, for lack of a better um, phrase or statement. And so I always told my mother, I want to remain humble in everything that I do, because as much as everything has been given to me, the quickest, you know, it can be taken away just like that. Um, so I've always wanted to make sure that I stay as humble as possible and stay focused, stay driven. And, and pretty much my dad is straight up, just straight up. So to be able to take on challenges and fail at it, to be, be able to take on challenges and actually do good in it or be successful at it, it's good. And to be able to stand strong no matter what the outcome is, is even better. And I think I take that from his personality and his characteristics in terms of just standing strong no matter what, because I don't expect success, success all the time. You know, I have really bad stories and I have really great stories. So to be able to still stand strong six years later, and pull that kind of strong um, personality from him, it's perfect. And so it's, it's a win-win for me all around. And I embrace all of it every single day. And I cherish every single minute of it. What, what, what is, is one, one thing people would be surprised to know about, about you, Kristen? Oh, that I play the clarinet. <laughs> oh, really? I, I, I wish I knew this before. before. I would have asked you to bring it. <laughs> <laughs> I um, and I actually had practice the other night. I played the clarinet. It's um one of the things that I love to do. I actually play the clarinet and the alto saxophone, and um, I'm currently in the college woodwind ensemble where I play the clarinet. So that's that's one of the things. And then the other thing is I actually sing. I am a, I have a range. So I sing first soprano and I can go as low as a tenor or a baritone. So I have a good comfortable range and I'm also in the college community chorale and in several groups as well. So two things, two things. That's what I do. So you're, so you're very, very talented. talented. Multi-talented, I, I would say so, yes. What, what did, did you, you learn about, about yourself while interning at Carolina Herrera and BCBG Max Azria? Well, Carolina Herrera... Um, that was my design internship. So that was actually for a grade. And um, 
<laughs> it was a very very well rounded experience. Uh -huh. And uh, BCBG was a was a, a an intern that I decided to do privately on my own, and that was more on the marketing side. And um, one of the things that I learned at Carolyn Herrera while there is uh, the importance of being organized, uh, the importance of deadlines, and the importance of knowing that uh, success does not come overnight. Um, it takes hard work and determination and focus, time, of course, money, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, lots of energy to, to be able to come up with several collections per year and to be able to stay on top of the trends and to be able to pitch it and market it and sell it. And, you know, it was a whole process being there uh, with, with Mrs. Herrera and the team. And, you know, it, it really, really created, uh, it really made me think in depth, you know, do I really want to pursue this in terms of being a fashion designer fully and having my own label? Or do I want to be a merchandiser? Do I want to be a textile designer? Do I want to be an illustrator? Well, actually, I didn't want to be an illustrator because I don't like to sketch. But um, <laughs> it, it, it just gave me, you know, it, it made me think. It made me think as to do I really want this? Do I want what, you know, what Mrs. Herrera has have? Do I want this whole lifestyle? Do I know what it takes? Do I know what it involves? And it, it, it took a lot of brainstorming, but I am here. And um, it's been good. And with BCBG... Uh, that was more on the marketing side. It was um, quite a bit of us interning all at the same time. So if, for me, it was just um, being able to not only interact with other um, interns and interact with the design team, but to be able to um, know my information at the time. Who's the editor of Mary Claire or who's the editor of Elle or who's the editor of Vogue? This person is coming today. Um, be on your, you know, your, be in tip top shape. You have to be, you know, on point. You have to know your stuff. You have to, you know. So that was a quick, quick, fast paced type of internship. And I got it done. I got what, it done. What, what, what would you say were the series of events, events that led you to design your own swimwear? And what was, what, was the, what was your first collection called? Well, I'll tell you. In college, about maybe two, two years in, I took a draping class. And in the driving class, I had to learn to make a bikini. And since I had a little advantage going into college because I had already know how to sew, I thought, okay, this would be a breeze. I'm okay. I'm good to go. And it took me seven weeks or thereabouts to make a bikini. And not just any bikini, a simple bikini, a triangular top and a very simple panty bottom. It, six to seven weeks it took me. And, you know, the challenge wasn't getting it um, made. The challenge was the draping. The challenge was, was you know, is it a two-way stretch? Is it a four-way stretch? How am I going to get this draped on the body? How am I going to put this together? You know, et cetera, et cetera. And um, the challenge was, uh, it was detailed, and I gave myself quite a bit of headache. And all at the same time, I loved it because I'm easily bored, and I wanted to be able to take on the challenge. I wanted to get it done. I wanted it to be good. And um, of course, I needed a good grade. <laughs> so, what, 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 were you, what was your parents' reaction when they learned that this is what you wanted to do for a career? They were very supportive. Uh, my parents, like I said, were very supportive from day one. I have three brothers. I don't have any sisters, and we're all very hands-on type people. Uh, we we never considered ourselves to be um, white collar or behind the desk working every single day. You know. We, we, we like to be in the field and getting our hands dirty. And, you know, that's our parents pretty much saw that we would be very, very active and very, very um, adventurous in the careers that we chose. So when I told them what I wanted to do, they were very supportive and they wished me well and wished me off. <laughs> you know, you mentioned the magazines and Mary Claire. Uh, Claire. And, and you were in, you were in that, that magazine. Uh, yes. In addition to, in, along with Ebony and Essence. Essence. Right. What, what is what is the message message you'd like readers to come away with after seeing your designs and reading about you? Well, the the Mary Claire uh, issue that they actually did a write up, which was really really fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and I tried to pack everything in one. I tried to pack 
um, my country and try to, to publi uh, publicly get my country name out there, pack everything about my, my uh, swim company and pack everything about my, my natural hair company, hair care company that I have as well. Um, so that was a write-up, but uh, Essence did um, more of a sale type write-up and then Ebony was just uh, a small feature, but nonetheless, it was a feature. Um, I, I definitely um, want to be able to say that, you know, the sky is the limit and it's, it's one of those things where the magazines were actually on my bucket list. And yes, I have a bucket list. Um, and to be able to accomplish that, it, it just goes to show you that Kristen Fraser, 30 years old at current from Tortola, British Virgin Islands, um, trying to put her company and her country on the worldwide map, if she can get into these international publications, so can you and so can anyone in the Caribbean um, or pretty much anyone at that. And um, it can be done. It can be done. You know, you, your, your designs, designs have been on runways and, and worn by international singer Beyonce and her daughter, yeah. Blue Ivy. Biggest what, accomplishment. <laughs> exactly. What, what, what is the feeling you hope people will experience while wearing your designs? I, I really want them to, to be able to not only just wear another bikini, but to be able to wear a brand that's British, that's Caribbean, um, that's full of color, that's vibrant, that, that means something. Because when I design um, my swimwear or my resort wear for women or kids or whoever, you know, I put a lot of passion into it based off of my inspiration, which pretty much comes from my home um, most of the time, um, my island. Um, and I want people to embrace that whole culture, embrace, you know, the, the whole nature of, of where I come from and, and what I stand for as a designer and appreciate it. And not just it being a beautiful design, but it's comfortable, it's sexy, it's a good price, and it's Caribbean. So where it's hot all year round. <laughs> Why is that so important for you to get your, your country out there? Uh, because I, I, I really, really love where I'm from. I really love my country. And um, I used to work for the British Virgin Islands Tourist Board uh, part-time. And I would consider myself a BVI ambassador. And um, because of my culture, because of my roots, because of, you know, the way I was raised and the way I was trained and, you know, the whole family togetherness and the one love unity type vibe, you know, it, it really, it's a nice place to be. It's a nice place to grow up. Um, all my schooling was here. It's just an overall great place to be. And I know a lot of people, um, like the saying goes, I live where you vacation. You know, that's enough. That's enough to be happy about, you know. So if I could push Tatola, Justin Dyke, Annie Gata, Virgin Gorda, and all the neighboring islands that make up the British Virgin Islands, I will push it any day and parallel that with my company it's important talking about that you, you're actually at a resort right now yes i am what is the name of the resort i am at the beautiful surf song villa resort it's nestled um in between beautiful beautiful boulders and i'm actually not on tortola it's actually on a smaller island called beef island um and so that's where i am right now doing this lovely interview Let's take a quick break.
We are, we are back, back with the lovely Kristen, Kristen Fraser. Fraser. Yes. Kristen, what is the name of your current collection and can, can you tell us some of your inspirations, inspirations for designing it? Oh, I am excited. I really am excited about this collection. This particular collection is really near and dear to my heart. Um, it's called Atacama. And Atacama is the driest desert in the world in South America. And um, I based my inspiration basically off of Atacama. It is solely because looking back from the year 2008 until now, I've done several collections. And during that space of time, I did not always have the capability or the production um, manpower to 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 mass produce my line and so I wanted to be able to come out strong for 2015 with not only new and innovative styles but I wanted to recreate old styles that never got to be produced that I never really got to to put out to sell um, and so I infused a lot of my old styles put a twist on it and added my new styles and I basically did like a rebirth of the collection and you know if you can imagine um, the driest desert in the world um, being all cracked and crinkly but yet there's life coming through it that's exactly how I envision this collection and believe it or not the desert actually blooms they bloom it, it blooms beautiful flowers berry flowers yellow flowers and it actually snows there so there's not the you know it's not just the whole it's the driest desert in the world but it's the whole contrast is the whole mind-boggling aspect as to why it snows, yet it's the driest that is desert in the world. It blooms, yet it's the driest desert in the world. And you, know, I, I infused that whole thought process with my designs, and I created um, a line for women swimwear, of course, a women's resort, and kids swim. Um, so, and I, I decided to not only recreate and to rebirth the brand with my swimwear, but I decided it was time to start making my own prints. So. I worked with a local uh, artist and he created, uh, he painted a painting for me and I was able to put that painting on fabric. So it's, the collection is, is original, it's 100% unique and the prints won't be found anywhere else in the world. And so that just makes you want to just have a bite of the collection because it's that much special to me. And um, I can't wait to launch it. I'm really excited about when, it. When, when do you plan, plan launching, launching it in, two, in 2015? Well, the tentative date is end of March, end of March 2015, um, that I will launch everything to, at the same time, the swim for the women, the swim for the kids, and the resort for the women. And, hint, hint, there may be one or two trunks in there for men and boys, so we'll see how it goes. I <laughs> see. Mm -hmm. Can't, Can't wait. wait. Can't leave I, the men. I am, I am, I am curious, Kristen. What, what drives you nuts about being, being Kristen? Kristen? What would drive anybody nuts about being Kristen? <laughs> um, I am um, I am sometimes unapologetic, um, and I am hmm, very impromptu. Mm -hmm. I am that I am, and um, very daring. And of course, I, like I said before, very driven. So it's 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 all those different things, and it's it's again the whole culture, how I was raised, um, me being. I'm very adventurous and wanting to try new things, not only in fashion, but in food, in travel. You know, I if I could learn a little of everything, it would be fantastic. And my company, the name Treffle, it's actually pronounced Treff, and it's French for clovers. And I love French, and I started um, taking up French. So even the name of my company is not even English. So, you know, it's um, I'm very interesting. I is a good word. Well, well <laughs> let, 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 let me twist... twist. I, I, I always, always consider my, my guests, guests, or anyone, anyone actually, as a gem. gem. I, know I know a gem has many facets, facets and, and oftentimes people only get to see one or two of those facets, facets and they form an opinion. Right. What, what I like to do on the show is to twist the gem a little bit and expose the other facets. facets. Oh. So, so I'm, I'm going, going to do, attempt, attempt to do that tonight. <laughs> so our audience can have a multidimensional perspective of who you are by the end of the conversation. Oh, wow. So I ask you this. If you... Had a, had a special, special place, place to go, go. Somewhere, somewhere exotic, exotic. To, to with, with a favorite book, book. And, and your favorite drink, drink. And, and your, your favorite, favorite music, music. <laughs> where, where will this place be, be? 
what, what will you be drinking, drinking? What, what will you be reading, reading and, and what, what music, music will be playing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh boy. Interestingly enough, the answer to that would really, really be contradictory to each other. Um, but I'm going to try my best here. Let's see. Where would I be? Um, Thailand. <laughs> Where is this? Thailand. 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 Mm, why? Thai you know, Thailand, it's... I don't know much about it from what what I've seen on TV or from the magnif magnificent prints that they have or the way they use their colors and their architecture and their textures, but I want to know. I want to know more, and it's intriguing to me. And um, I would just get on a plane and go to Thailand and learn as much as I can about the culture and the people and the, the fine cuisine, everything that I can, fashion, everything. Um, Thailand, why not? How old oh, would you be? What Thailand. Would you... Thailand um, <laughs> um, I like trying new things. Um, so, of course, I don't know any Thailand drinks. But if I were to pick a drink, <laughs> gosh, uh, I would have to say uh, sparkling water. <laughs> That's Spark. the truth. I know, I okay. know. That's I fair. know. But, you know, I love sparkling water. I love Perrier. If you want to add the Perrier lime, why not? I, I love sparkling water. I think maybe you were expecting alcoholic. Um, but, oh, no, 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 no. I, I love sparkling, sparkling water, water, too. I love yeah. sparkling water. Um, and hint, hint, you have to play it safe sometimes. I'm playing it very safe. <laughs> but I, I do love sparkling water. Um, uh, since I don't know of any um, specific um, drinks in Thailand. Um, if I would have to pick a book, and believe it or not, it, this might sound a little bit of the bore line, but I would pick a, a textile book. Um, and I would pick a textile book because textiles are very interesting to me. I am always feeling, I'm always touching, I am always stroking, I'm always smelling. And, you know, I, I am interested in all things textiles, you know, how fibers are put together and, and you know, the different combinations that you can mix and match with fibers and, and interpreting that into different fabrics, believe it or not, because it, it pairs well with making a trip or, or, or going to Thailand. I think it pairs very, very well. And I would have a good book on textiles, believe it or not. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, and what was the last one? What, what music, music will you be listening, listening to? <laughs> I would be... I would probably be listening to some some reggae reggae music um, of all artists. Um, love Bob Marley, of course, and um, I would probably be listening to some good old reggae music, bobbing the head, mm -hmm. getting conscious vibes. <laughs> um, but I think that's it's an interesting combination. I am interesting. Tell, Tell us about, about the thought, thought behind. behind Where's it? Truffle. 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 Yeah. Travel to it for for girls. Yes, that was um. I had a dream, and um, most times I act on my dreams um, because uh, the most times they actually come to fruition to reality. Um, and I had a dream. There were some little girls running on a beach. I think it was probably the same on, on Beef Island. Um, there's a, a beach called Long Bay Beef Island, um, and it's the, the girls were running on the beach. And they were wearing swimsuits, and they were wearing my swimsuits. My, now, I wasn't doing kids' swimwear, but I thought it was quite interesting, and the colors were bright. You know, they were having a good time. Uh, the designs were very, very cute and fun. They're little girls, of course. And um, it was a good time. It was like a, a fun day. And I woke up, and I said, you know what? Why not? And I tend to use those two words together a lot um, throughout my career and throughout my life. Why not? Mm -hmm. um, so I did it. I did it, and I launched the kids' line um, in November 2013, and I called it Truffle 284. Uh, very, very simple reason. Uh, 284 is the area code of my country, and 284, they're, they're numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, and kids, numbers, it works. And I put it together, and there you have it, and it's been very, very good for me. Do, uh, you, so have, 
Sorry. Sorry. Do, you do you have, have a favorite, favorite set of favorite, favorite color, color or set, set of colors, colors that always make it, in, make, it make it into your designs? designs? Gosh. Um, well, thinking back of each and every each each and and every single collection that I've done, um, I have not incorporated my favorite color, but there has always been white, the classic element of white in every single collection in some way, shape, or form. Whether it's a full white piece, whether it's an accent or a color block, whether it's a little trim, um, you know, there's always been the element of white. But my favorite color is a berry purple. Everything I like is berry, and the good thing is for the new collection, I've infused berry purple because it's it's was one of the inspirational colors. It's on trend, and um, I'm excited to launch that. So, but classic white it, it has always been embedded in every single collection that I've. Done. Are those two pieces over your left, left shoulder your, your collection part, part of your collection? collection? Well, they're part of the 2014 collection, which is now. So I have my women's uh, a, a one piece here, mm -hmm. a women's one piece, and then I have a the girl one piece there so it's they're, they're good it's happening it's happening now um the, the 2014 collection called caribbean escape who wouldn't want to escape to these beautiful islands what, is your, what, what is, is your most memorable fashion, fashion design experience, experience? Ooh. Ooh. um hmm. most memorable or, or one, one of them, them. yes is it yes there's Quite a bit there. <laughs> um, I would have to say I did a fashion show um, in the Bahamas. It was my, I, I like doing things that are classic um, and signature. And I did a fashion show in the Bahamas and it was my signature collection, um, signature red, white, and black collection. So everything was a combination of all three, a combination of two, or just one of, but that was basically what the collection was about. And because I, I showcased my designs there in the in NASA Bahamas, it was a it was one of my first shows that I did. It was a it was a a well rounded experience. It was um, bittersweet, and it was um, it was just it was just an awesome time. And I had a lot of challenges, a lot of challenges. Um, I knew no one. But uh, I took the plunge. I said, "Why not?" I did the show, um, and it's 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 helped to really um, give me a good perspective on doing all the other shows that I've done. So that's that was a good memory for me. I enjoyed that. When, when you are, and this is in a creative context, context when you're by yourself, yourself mm -hmm. quiet, in one, one of your quiet, quiet moments alone, alone with Kristen, Kristen what, what is, is the, the one thing you find yourself thinking a lot about? about? other parts of the world <laughs> and why I'm not and other parts of the world and why I'm not there <laughs> ah. I, I I really love to travel mm -hmm. it's something that I love to do and I just came back from Europe actually Portugal and I've never been to Portugal so that was a fantastic experience um, but I you know I, I find myself uh, thinking a lot about different places because again you know I I'm from a very small island 30,000 people and who wouldn't want to travel the world who wouldn't want to get you know a well-rounded experience of as much cultures as 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 you can and to be able to infuse that in your collections or infuse that in your inspirational boards or your mood boards and be able to pull that you know, from the archives, and I could recall, you know, I've been to St. Lucia, Jamaica, all over the Caribbean, and the Miami, New York, California, and then uh, Brussels, Germany, London, Portugal, you know, and I have all those experiences and those memories that I can now pull from the archives and say, hmm, I want to do a collection based off of when I went to London and pull all the imagery and, and, and pull all the memories um, and be able to create a collection off of that is, is quite humbling and it's, it's quite exciting, actually. Yeah. Is there a particular woman you design for, or, or let me let me let me let me let me ask you it this way: Do you design specifically for the Caribbean woman, or any woman? Any woman, mm -hmm. um, and I say that because we are, you know, well, Caribbean women, we have our shapes and our curves, but um, the, you know, the the average woman. Um, versus the Caribbean woman or the average woman versus a European woman. There's just so many different body shapes and types. And I know that I won't be able to cover all at this time, but if I can cover a good amount based off of 
pretty much draping in construction and pattern making, then, you know, that would be fantastic. And so I try to cover all the basics, the basics. And one of my catchphrases for when I started my, my company was feel comfortable with the new you. I mean, I designed swimsuits. Not everybody's comfortable in a swimsuit. Not everybody's comfortable in, in a bikini. Not everybody's comfortable in their own skin. I mean, I can recall Selwyn, I used to wear tights and big baggy shirts with a sports bra to the beach. And I loved the beach. So you can imagine how that would keep me back in the water. You know, and I had to come into my own and I'm now quite comfortable um, with within my own self and within my own skin and, and, and mm -hmm. very confident about that. And, and I learned that over time. And I want other women to be able to feel the same way, not just in a swimsuit and not just in, you know, my resort, my resort, uh, my resort or lounge pieces, but to be able to just feel good all around, no matter what they have on. And so my, my target market pretty much is a girl that's maybe between, in terms of women, from the ages of 16, uh, very strong-minded, very determined, very driven, much like myself, um, but still the girl that's still conservative or reserved or not yet come into her own. Um, going up to the age of 65, you know, they're, they're very uh, daring, bold women at the age of 65 and 70. And I have those customers. So I try to diversify my look diversify the styles, but still keep them very simple, classic, detailed, um, colorful, of course, and um, just overall classic and memorable. Um, so that the, uh, you my customers... You, 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 you mentioned, mentioned earlier about, about being, being an ambassador, ambassador of sort mm -hmm. for, your, for your country. Um, what, what is special about being, being first a BVI woman and then a Caribbean, Caribbean woman? Or Well, I think I, I'm. What is special about being a BVI woman versus a Caribbean woman? Forces, a BVI woman and a Caribbean woman. Well, I'm a BVI woman, and um, hmm, I think that because I'm so driven, and because I, I know what I want out of life at this point, and I had to get there. Um, I think a lot of BVI women are like that. Um, they are very, very strong. They're very confident. And I think that BVI women on a whole have that same kind of mentality, like, why not? Or they take the chance. They take the risk. Not all, but most. And you know that, that's, a, that's a very good characteristic to have. That's a unique characteristic to have. And I stand, I stand proud with that, and um, but the Caribbean woman, the Caribbean woman, still has that to me, because we we all, even though we have our different cultures, our different styles, um, the way we do things, maybe the way we were brought up, um, we still come together as one, and we still have a lot of the same traits and characteristics. Here in Tortola alone, we have a diverse amount of cultures that we have pretty much almost every Caribbean island represented here in the BVI. So you can imagine, I have friends from everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, but yet we all have the same traits, so it's, it's cool. When, when you first started, what are some, some early fears, fears you had to overcome, overcome and, and what, what kept, kept you going? going? Well, let me tell you, have I got a story for you. Um, when I first started, I, I knew what the business entailed. I knew what, what it required, and um, I, I just leaped out. You know, when you just, you don't know how to swim, but you just launch out into the deep, that's what I did. And I surely did have some hiccups because of that. Um, I, I remember losing $10,000, US dollars, just like that. Really? Just like that from production, just from a bad batch of production. And you know, even though I know how to sew and even though I approve samples, the outcome wasn't the same. And when you have, such a big loss like that, um, how do you come back from that? How do you get back on the bag wagon? How do you, how do you um, regroup, you know? And, and how, do you, how do you continue? Well, the support system, the family, the friends, the people that are in your corner, um, that, that, that five finger type um, friendship or five finger contact that you can depend on, that you can lean on, you know, it, it, it keeps you, it helps to keep you grounded and it helps to keep you going because I wanted to give up twice, Selwyn, twice um, doing what I do. 
um, the first time was when I hit that all time low and I lost ten thousand dollars. And the the second time was, you know, years later, I put so much work and effort and energy into promoting and marketing, fashion show this and fashion show that and trade show this and trying to get the product out there and I sell resale and retail and I sell wholesale, but I still have my, it's still a niche market and I still am focused on what I want to do, but it still was not going anywhere in a sense of I'm starting to see a turnaround. And, and that was the second time when I wanted to give up. But again, you know, I, I just looked up, I said a prayer, I had a good support system and I kept going. And there are many other instances that were bad, but then there are many other instances that were really good um, that, that, that made me say I can't give up because the good outweighs the bad. Yes. And when I analyzed that, it, it worked for me. And I said, you know what, I, I, I can do it. I can still do it, I'm gonna do it. I'm going to do it and I'm never gonna say I wanna give up again. I refuse to. So it's not even in my vocabulary to give up. Talking about, <laughs> no talking about giving up. up. When, when ha, have you, you ever been, been in a situation, situation where you, you didn't feel like getting up, up you didn't feel like working, you didn't feel like, like designing? Have you ever course, experienced that? that? Of course. And how do you get yourself out of that mindset? Well, I've experienced that during the making of the collection after the designs are done. I've experienced it um, while I have the, the mood board set and then I'm getting into the process of sketching. I've had the feeling after I've had the whole collection set and I've done the photo shoot and I've done the lookbooks, I've had the, fe the, the, the feeling during different um, instances. And, you know, it just goes back to the good old Grandma Clover. And, you know, just, just reminiscing on the, the, a, a favorite song, reminiscing on my favorite scripture that God won't give me more than I could bear and just realizing how much people are depending on me and how much I really love this, how much, you know, went into this and why I'm here in the first place. And I just, I just take that, I grab the bow by the horns and I keep going. Outside I, your parents and grandma, who, who would, would you say have had the greatest influence or impact on you? My grandmother, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> no, well, outside of her. Oh, outside of her. Yes, yes and, and your parents. parents. Outside, outside of the three of them. them. Biggest impact. Hmm. In terms of what I do in my company, you know, I would have to say there's a, there's a young man, mm -hmm. and he has been... Uh, in my life since the inception of the company, since I implemented the company, and he's a graphic designer. And he's one of those guys that has his own dreams, his own ambitions, um, his own goals, but he's been there from day one, um, working with the Truffle team, doing what he needs to do to help me to get to the next step. And, and and all the same while putting his dreams on hold, all the same while understanding um, what it is I'm working towards and helping me to get there. And he has been um, key, key in, in my life, especially now with, with everything that's been going on, because I went from zero to 50 in a matter of months. Um, but he has been key, and his name is Kyron Harry, and he's been very, very influential in terms of his design aesthetic and him being an artist and me being an artist um, and in terms of just being a well-rounded supporter and I, I am grateful to him for everything he's he's done and how he's impacted my life. Of course there are a lot of other people but he's been you know key mm -hmm. in terms of me not giving up, in terms of me putting my best foot forward and just giving it my best in anything that I do. So how I'm very happy to have him on the team. How, How did, did you arrive, arrive at the name Truffle? <laughs> um, my friend and I one day, uh, before that actually, while I was working for the tourist board part time, I was um, doing my business plan and getting everything together and the only thing I couldn't get was a name for the company. <laughs> and um, I was going through everything, Googling everything, Googling flowers, Googling countries, Googling different languages. Googling anything that came to mind, any and everything, and, and nothing was sticking, just nothing was sticking. And my, my good friend was, was with me one day, and she was like, you, you still don't have a name? I said, no, I have everything else, and I don't have a name. She said, well, who have been, who has been one of the, um, the most influential people 
in your life so far? Or who do you look up to? Who do you idolize? Um, and I was like, my grandmother. And then she started going through and saying, okay, well, maybe we can infuse that somehow. And I said, hmm, maybe. And then she was like, what's your name? I said, Ruth Clover Anthony. And then I was like, no, oh, I don't like any of those names for the company because I'm thinking global with my company. I wasn't thinking, oh, I just want to have a, a Caribbean brand. I, I was thinking global from day one. I was thinking about the bigger picture from day one. Um, so the name had to be diverse across the board and could sit well on a rack next to other designers and could sit well in maybe one day my own flagship store. It could sit well next to anything in any boutique or in any store. Um, and she said, okay, do you have a favorite language? Do you like any languages? I said, I like French. One day I'll learn French and I'll become fluent. She said, okay. And then we started putting it together, putting it together. And I said, oh, oh, I like Treff. I like truffle. It, it sounds really nice. It sounds international. It could still be local. It could be regional. Um, it works across the board. It's a different language. And I love it. And it just worked. And that was it. Just like that. How, How do you think, think your growth as, as a designer has, has evolved, evolved over the last three years? Oh, I can, I can see that throughout the collections. Um, just looking back and even carrying it further back, six years from whence I came till now, the collections have have evolved with my experience in the business, um, with my networking opportunities, with my research, and with my overall uh, travel and inspiration that I've taken from all over. Um, the collections have definitely evolved in a good way. They've matured, and um, I, I am I am happy with where I am right now. And again, that's another reason why I really like the fact that I'm bringing out the Atacama collection because it, it really speaks of my design aesthetic and it speaks of um, my creativity and it speaks of my homeland. So. <laughs> Let's, Let's take, take a break. break. With a beautiful and talented Kristen Fraser. Kristen, when you let me let me let me ask you the, the question this way: What would you like the little girl who aspires to be like you? What would you like her to think when she hears your name or sees one of your designs? <laughs> Well, right now, everybody's thinking Beyonce. <laughs> Whenever um, a little girl or anyone sees me. But I, I want them to think more than that. I want them to, to, to see that it, it's, it came from somewhere. Having the, the, the acknowledgement of Beyonce wearing my designs and any other accolades that I've gotten, it, it came from hard work and it, it didn't come overnight. And um, I want her to see that's a girl that works for what she wanted. And um, she's now reaping the, the benefits, the reaping pretty much the benefits of that. And um, I want them to be inspired by that. I want them to be encouraged by that. And believe it or not, Selwyn, I actually taught. 
I taught a high school with over 60 kids how to sew, girls and boys. And I loved it because I not only taught them, but I mentored them um, in a very positive way because that, that's very, very important to me. I take on interns. I go and I speak to uh, the wider community in terms of primary schools, high schools, um, any kind of clubs that are uh, on island and off island. And I try to encourage people as much as I can. So anyone looking at me when they see me, whether on island or abroad, I want them to see um, success and I want them to see uh, a, a hardworking Hardworking. Why, why, why is that so important to you to mentor young people? Because they're the they're the future, of course. Mm -hmm. But with so many things going on in the world today, honestly, they could look to anything, anyone. They can go on the internet and pretty much get whatever answer they need out of life. And if you don't have that one on one. Um, conversation. If you don't have that chat, if you don't have that that talk and and that physical um, contact with another human being versus the World Wide Web, then you could you can go astray very very easily. And there's so many different career paths and so many different influences, good and bad, with humans and on the internet. But you know the the interaction, positive interaction, and con continuous um, mentorship and following up and actually caring, not just saying it because you can, but actually saying it from the heart and caring, it will go a long way. And I still keep in touch with my high school kids to this very, very day. And um, a, a, little, a little goes a long way. What, what are some of the challenges you encounter from design to, or from concept actually to showroom? Hmm. Many. <laughs> Where do I start? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, well, having the importance of uh, visual for the sketch that you would do, and I am not the best sketcher, <laughs> and Donna Karen can sketch either, so I, I use that as my ploy. But um, having the, the the importance of having a good sketch would would go a long way, and and I've not always had that um, because while I can sew. Uh, my sketches have not always been too nice, and that would um, create a domino effect because that's where it starts. Yeah. And, um, if the sketch isn't good, then and, and your pattern maker or your draper or your seamstress or tailor makes exactly what they see, then we can have problems, fit issues, um, maybe incorrect use of fabric, or it's an inch too short or two inches too long, or the binding is not good, or you know, it, the, from the sketch to reality um, is is important. But the sketch is the most important, and I had to learn that along the way um, because I was basically basing everything off of construction. But um, because I, I'm not the best sketcher, but that sketch says it all. Mm -hmm. But of course, there's been hiccups with the construction because you know it's it's not everything doesn't happen in a day, and I've had to make samples once, twice, three times, even four times before I actually got it right, and that's actually quite costly. Mm -hmm. So. You know, all those things in terms of tightening up to try to um, put the best foot forward in terms of being proactive and, and um, saving money and being, being able to have a product that's affordable. It, it, all of that it encompasses the product. So, did, did, I just, I'm just curious, did, did you, uh, um, did one, one of your lights go out? You just seem a little. Um, no, same, same light. Same, same light, light, okay. okay. Sorry. Sorry. What it's would okay. you like the, the connoisseurs of fashion? In and, in and out, out of the region, region to think when they see or hear your hear the word truffle or your, your name Kristen Fraser. Fraser. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? What, what would, would you like what would you like, like the fashion connoisseur in, 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 in and out of the region, region to think when, when they hear your name Kristen Fraser or, or the word truffle? Simple. She's going places. Like She's that. going places. Mm -hmm. Um because they, when they hear the name, they would affiliate it with however they know the name, whether it's by celebrity, whether it's by a trade show, a networking opportunity. But to be able to have them to say, she's going places. What, what, what is, is your vision, vision for Truffle, Truffle in 10 years? years? Well, I would love to be, of course, in... Um, boutiques, um, major department stores worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, but I would also, of 
course, love to have my own flagship store uh, right here in BVI. Um, that's that's on the bucket list. Um, it's one of the main goals to be able to have my own flagship store um, in ten years, but to be also but to also be able to have the brand represented in other parts of the world um, where people can um, just go right in, pick their piece, and leave and feel really good or online. To be able to have the, the brand represented worldwide would be amazing. Did you did you find yourself tweaking your vision from when you first started to now? Did you recalibrate calibrate a little bit? Of course, of mm -hmm. course, and that's that's natural. I think it's natural in any in any business right. um, because as as you progress, uh, things change. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to to edit. You have to sometimes recreate the wheel. Um, you have to be spontaneous. Um, sometimes you just have to flip, flip a switch really quickly. Um, and I think I'm changing the game a little bit now with the new collection Atacama by having a rebirth of the of the line. And um, it's a good thing. It's change is a good thing. I totally embrace it. And um, I'm expecting even bigger changes to come for me, with, let's say, within 10 years. How do you, How do you react, react to change? change? With a smile. <laughs> 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 um, good change, bad change. You know, I have to. I have to smile at the storm. Um, I have to smile at the calm, um, because you know, if if I were to, if I were to gloat, if I were to be um, unappreciative, if I were to 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 complain and 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 to just whine and, and to not appreciate um, everything that has happened to me thus far, then. You know, it's why do it? You know, why do it? The, the the challenges and the experiences, good, bad, ugly, highs, lows, everything has to come. It will come. Um, it's just am I equipped to handle it when it comes? So yes, uh -huh. smile at every storm, smile at every calm. <laughs> what, what are some fashion, fashion trends, trends in the Caribbean, Caribbean that have caught your eyes? Well, I wouldn't say that this is a mega trend. Uh -huh. But the hand painting on fabrics, when people make their own prints on the fabric, literally, I, I know it's not mega, a mega trend, but I think it's slowly becoming um, a trend, a bigger trend. It's getting more recognition, it's getting more play, um, just because of the whole craft behind it and because it's so intimate. Um, I think that that's that's gonna be a really big trend to come. I mean, there's Caribbean trends for me. This is me personally, in my opinion, um, and I can speak from BVI stand, but I don't necessarily think that we have our own specific trends. I think that we pull a lot of inspiration from different um, cultures and countries, especially the U.S., of course, um, and from different musical artists. And uh, in other genres, I think that I think that we we don't have a specific specific trend, um, but when we do find our own niche, we we hold on tight and we stick to it. Mm -hmm. um, we have our um, territorial fabric for the BVI that's very very um, unique to us or indigenous to us. Really, and the, the, B the BVI. The BVI, and mm -hmm. I was actually very happy to be a part of that. The young man that I was speaking earlier, Kyron Harry, he actually sketched the illustration and um, and then recreated it on the computer and then I went ahead and printed it on fabric and um, I now resell this fabric and it's 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 our culture. It, it the whole the whole aspect of the design, the elements that were used, it's it's our culture and it's I wouldn't say it's a major trend, but I would say that if other Caribbean countries caught on to it to get their own fabrics and their own prints and that would be something that would be fantastic. Um, so p pulling, I mean Caribbean, to me the Caribbean just pulls a lot of, of, of trends from US and Europe but I personally don't think that we necessarily have major trends within you know the Caribbean per se per se and if there are I don't know of any. So Where can someone find, find, find that, that or see that, that fabric, fabric you're, you're talking about? about? Well, um, Google is a wonderful place, but in terms of getting the fabric, it's sold in my grandmother's store. 
um, clovers in Tortola in Rowtown. It is the national territorial fabric. And the colors that are used, again, the, the, the different design elements that were infused together, everything has a, a meaning behind it. Um, everything that was done to the print to make it the print has a reason. Um, and um, Mr. Kyron Harry did a fantastic job. And I actually designed the territorial national wear, uh, the women's wear. So I've been doing a lot of different things outside of swimwear. And that's very historical to me. That was a very good accomplishment for me um, to be able to have the national dress designed by me um, that others would have to wear, especially during culture day, or let's say right now, the, the current Miss World, Rosanna Chichester, she's representing the BBI in London right now at, at Miss World. So, you know, she's wearing, she has to wear the territorial fabric, the national fabric. And might I add, she's also wearing truffle swimwear in the competition. So that's always good. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Who are, who are some, some Caribbean, Caribbean designers you, you, you admired, admired uh, as a child, and, and who are some you admire today? Well, you know, to be honest, and I'm going to be very, very honest, I didn't know any. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, it goes back to me playing the clarinet and being in choir. I was more on that line of things growing up, so I wasn't really into fashion per se. Oh, let me meet other designers and I'm a designer. I was more into the sewing and learning the draping and pattern making. I didn't necessarily call myself a designer. Um, but it's when I went to college and when I got, you know, the whole, the, the well-rounded picture of being a fashion designer embedded in me, that's when I started to pick things up and that's when I started to do more research. And when I moved back home in 2007, late 2007, I said to myself, wait a minute, I know all these U.S. designers and I don't know any Caribbean designers. That was the honest truth. And I was like, this is not good. Um, so I started Googling people and I wanted to take part in, in fashion shows in the Caribbean and start to network and meet other Caribbean designers that had the vision, that had the dream, that, that wanted to be able to have their company represented on the global stage. And I met in 2008, I just dive right into it. In 2008, I met a wonderful, wonderful designer um, named uh, Robert Young. And he's from The Cloth. His company is called The Cloth. And he's all things natural. He's all about um, using natural fibers, um, using textures, infusing um, Caribbean colors, Caribbean prints, and just meshing them together very, very well and doing a lot of drapery. He's very into detail. And I admired him from the get-go. And we've been been friends from 2008 until now. And um, the cloth has been, he's been around for quite some time, I think over 20 years. You know, and I admired him. I looked up to him and I still talk to him to this day, actually. And um, when I was receiving my award, I'm just throwing this in there. When I was receiving my award in Washington, um, when I came out for my award, I wore a beautiful skirt. Um, that was done by him. It was 10 yards of fabric, Selwyn. 10, ten yards. yards of fabric. 10 yards of fabric. I, I mean, can't fathom that. He, I know, I know, but I fathomed it and I loved it. It was heavy, <laughs> very heavy, <laughs> but it was to the knee and it was basically made out of circle skirts. Imagine one circle skirt times like 50 and the whole thing was like about 10 yards. And the detail he put into that corset look at the back, um, his embroidery detail on the front, with all this fluidity, it was amazing. And I had to have it. Is Robert, Robert the brother of Richard, Richard Young? Young? He is. Yes. He is, indeed. And I met Richard in 2008 as well. So, yeah, he is, he's my all-time favorite Caribbean designer. I love him to death. To let's, take, let's, take let's take a quick break. break. All right. Kristen Fraser. Fraser. <laughs> Kristen, Kristen, just, just out, out of curiosity, curiosity knowing, knowing what you know, you know now in the fashion industry, industry, 
what, what would you change, change if you could, could if anything? anything? You know what? To be honest, Selwyn, I wouldn't change anything. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. I am, I am all about experience. And if I, if I could change it, then everything would be my way. And I don't, I, I want the experience. I, I want, um, I want to be able to grow. I want to be able to to look back and know that you know I I messed up. I didn't mess up. This you could have changed and done better for future. This you can. This you can't. Don't do this. Don't do that. I want I want the experiences. I don't think I would change anything. To be quite honest, you I don't have a website, Kristen. I do. What is, I what started is with a website. <laughs> that has progressed as well. So, <laughs> what, what is it? What is the website address? It is www.treffeldesigns.com, and I can spell it out for you. T R E F as in Frank L E designs.com. Dot com. When are you most happy? At night, after twelve midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Why is that? that? Why, Why after, after twelve? 12? You know what? No one is calling me. No one is bothering me, and I'm in my own space where I, where I can think. I can think about being somewhere else. I can um, get inspired. I can pretty much do what I want to be to, to do and be completely relaxed. Completely relaxed after twelve. Yeah. What, what, what profession would you like to try, try given, given an opportunity? opportunity? I would like to be an opera singer. <laughs> is that so, Kristen? It is so, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> I um, I love opera. Uh -huh. I've never been to an opera. I've never been to an opera, and I love opera. And um, I used to sing opera, believe it or not. I have no, little to no voice training. Um, it, it's just, it's been natural for me to, to do so. And I, um, I would love to be on that stage and, and give a rendition. Kristen, if I, I give, give if you, if, if I, I give you this stage right now, which is global, oh my, what would you what would you sing? I mean, you, you can, can sing opera, opera, you can sing a pop song, song that you you like. What, what would you sing? sing? Go mm -hmm. ahead. In, in 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 an operatic kind of voice or just singing? Just, just singing, singing. Well, you know. Go, Go for oh it. Oh my, this is definitely impromptu. Yes, <laughs> you just said you like impromptu. That's why I offered you this opportunity. Right, right. Okay, I'll do it. Um, and I am telling you, I'm not going, you're the best man I'll ever know, there's no way I can ever go, no, no, there's no way, no, no, I'm not living without you. I don't want to be free. I'm staying. I'm staying. And you, and you, and you, you're going to love me. That's it. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> wow. Wow. You, you got, got a future there. there. I think I started a little high, but I I, I stuck with good. it. It was good. It was good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't know why I chose that song, but it just came out. <laughs> I like that. What, what are, are you most, most thankful, thankful for? for? After life, family. Mm -hmm. After life comes family. Um, it's it it's. I have a huge family. I have eleven aunts on one side. <laughs> alone um, and I, I say that because without family without that good structure and solid foundation I'm not saying life would be bad but you know it it, it certainly helps to mold certainly helps to mold you um, and, and make you uh, a better person um, especially if you're surrounded with love if, if you're surrounded with warmth and compassion and fun and my family is just as hyper and just as animated as I am and so we have a blast, and I'm, I'm very, very thankful for each and every one of them. I have a gazillion first cousins only, so you can imagine Christmas Day at my house. <laughs>
what, what do, do you tell, tell a young, young aspiring, aspiring fashion, fashion designer? Go for it. Go, go for it. it. Go, go for, for it. it. And I say go for it, but expect challenges, um, expect pitfalls, expect to be stabbed in the back, um, expect the success, and expect positive results no matter what. Expect it all. If you expect the unexpected, you'll do just fine. Who would, would you say, say Kristen Fraser is evolving into? And who, who would she be, be or who will she be in 10 years? years? Kristen Fraser, third person. Kristen Fraser is evolving into a true Caribbean um, woman. And not just a true Caribbean woman, but a businesswoman at that. Uh, because the design world is fantastic, but you you kind of want to parallel it with the business, with the marketing, and be able to be all around. And um, I think in 10 years from now, and coupled with my experience with the family business that I manage, and the natural hair and skincare line that I'm also a part of, that I also manage, uh, along with Treffle, I think that I will be in a much better place. Wait, wait, wait a second, person. Person. Wait, wait a minute. You, you have, have a natural... natural... I do. Really? I do, yeah. I was hinting it to you earlier, too. I do. No hint it. Here's an opportunity. opportunity. Tell, Tell us about, about it. it. It's called Sage Roots. And um, the name is very easy. The highest mountain or the highest peak on our island is called Sage Mountain. And so that's more towards the western end of the island where I'm from. And I have three first cousins. We've all been natural. I'm sure you can tell. All our lives, we have never used any chemicals in our hair. We are all about just being that, being that overall natural person. And yes, I have a protective hairstyling now. <laughs> but um, we we named the company Sage Roots because we're all rooted from the BVI, and we're all from the western end of the island. And we cater to all hair types, but we focus a lot on uh, black hair and the importance of taking care of your hair, having healthy hair, but not just having healthy hair. Um, you are you, a product from within. So what you put in is what you get out, and that goes all the way to the, your hair um, and your hair follicles. So where, we, where, where, where can, can someone purchase some of this, or where can they see what, what it looks, looks like? like or, or yeah. Well, yeah. we have um, several outlets. Of course, we have Facebook, uh, facebook.com uh, backslash Sage Roots. And then we also have a blog, um, sagejudes.blogspot.com um, and we have a website that's coming as well but if you just if anyone can just google uh, sagejudes or sagejudes bbi and I'm pretty sure we'll we'll come up and you'll be able to find us that way uh, awesome. we also sell all our products out of of course clovers <laughs> so <laughs> yeah awesome. so you ship anywhere we ship everywhere we ship worldwide and we do sell wholesale and retail as well so hmm. What, what is gratifying, gratifying about, about being Kristen, Kristen Fraser? Fraser? Waking up every day excited about the new opportunities that are going to present itself and waking up knowing that the, the opportunities are going to be new and they're going to be worthwhile no matter what they are. I mean, I get excited you know, just to, to know that something new is going to come in my inbox because you never know what's going to show up in your inbox. And um, I never know what's going to show up on my, my iPhone. And so, you know, you might just get that call. Or you might get that one thing in your inbox that might change your life completely, you know, because of networking or because of this interview that we're doing now or, you know, basically because of, of all the hard work you put in. And so it, it, gets, it gets very exciting. I mean, some days I actually don't want to get up. <laughs> but when I do, when I do, I, I can't wait for the challenges that are ahead. If, if you had a chance to go back had a long day, believe me. <laughs> if, if you had, had a chance to go back in time, time what, what would you tell your 15-year-old self? You should have played a little more. <laughs> mm. um, the, the same rambunctious, rambunctious kid is saying, saying you should have played, played a little rambunctious more. rambunctious kid, but I should have played just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Because I took the playing aspect but would always find a way to challenge myself and infuse it with, whether it's fashion or infuse it with some kind of activity where I would 
learn from it or I would be doing research on it. It could never be just take it for what it is, have a good time. It could it was it was never that, you know. <laughs> Finish the sentence for us. I look, I look forward, forward to, to Sunday, Sunday evenings too. Gosh. I look forward to Sunday evenings with warm apple pie and vanilla bean ice cream. <laughs> what, what is that? What, what is that, that Kristen? <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> it's food. I look forward to a good Sunday night. I look forward to having apple pie, warm apple pie, and vanilla bean ice cream. I look forward to just sitting back and enjoying my Sunday night eating that. <laughs> what, what does success, success mean, mean to you, Kristen? Oh, success means to me um, that I've tried, that I've failed in my trying, and that I've tried again, and that I've been successful. Does that make sense? Yes, yes it does. It's, it's, it's as simple as it sounds. It's, I think it sums up pretty much everything. What, what makes, makes you get up every day and, and do what, what you do? do? What, what drives, drives you? you? My passion. My passion. You know, I, at some point, at some point, I fell in love with fashion. But for a while, for a long time or for many years, I was in love with sewing. I mean, I can open my own uh, fabric store and sell fabric galore with the amount of fabric between my mother and I that we have, you know, in the office alone. Just fabric galore. Um, so I loved sewing. Mm -hmm. But over time and doing what I do, I fell in love with fashion and I have a really, really um, special part in my heart for, for what I do. Mm -hmm. Here's a question I ask all my guests. Sure. What, what makes you laugh out loud? A good picture. <laughs> a funny picture. <laughs> a funny. Are, are you thinking of one right now? Kristen? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I love jokes, and I love to laugh. And um, send a good picture to me via Facebook, WhatsApp, Viber. Doesn't matter. Send it to me, and I will crack up. <laughs> That's you good know. to know. Yes, well, Chris, Kristen. <laughs> I have to say, thank you very much. much. For sharing, sharing spe spe spending the time, time with us and sharing your story. Thank you so much. I think it is very important. I believe that we are never more connected as human beings than when we share our stories, not so that others can glorify us through our successes, right. but so that our challenges can also be instructive. Right. And I sometimes challenge my guests to imagine a young person listening to them and being inspired to go to step beyond their limitations and, and one day becoming someone of note. Right. And I, I think that, to me, that is what really um, symbolizes our humanity. When we can do something, when we can give without expectations, Definitely. give of ourselves and not wanting to wait around to see what the result is. I think that's very important. And I can, I can tell from our conversation tonight that you are busy giving of yourself. Yes. And I, I, I anticipate, anticipate very wonderful, wonderful and great things from you, Kristen. Kristen. I'm, I'm looking, looking, I will keep looking at Truffle. Please and, do. And <laughs> I'm looking forward to see your new line, line. Atacama. Is that, that? Atacama. Yes. Atacama. Yes. Atacama. Yes. The rebirth of Truffle. Okay. And, and thank you. you. Is, Is there anything, anything you would like to say before we close tonight? tonight? Um, I, I sure do. I want to, again, just encourage young people, uh, middle-aged people, older people, because there's still, you know, the older people that have that dream that are still fighting towards that. But um, special um, message to the young people to just continue to, to, to follow your dream, your passions. I mean, I can see every single, every single fashion designer and every single music, music artist, every single artist artist, um, every single person that has... Um, made the step towards success and that are actually successful they say the same thing and i join in with them the sky's the limit um you know you are a product of your environment but it's what you do 
with the product is is how it'll become and and what the, and the end results you'll actually get from it. So I encourage every single young person and everybody in general to just continue to reach for the stars. I never imagined I would have been where I am today um, with all the success so far, and I'm that much more humble and I'm that much more driven to continue to be a better me and and have a a better company and learn from my experiences. So with that, God bless you all. Thank you so much, Selwyn, for having me. I appreciate you. Surf Song has been lovely to me. And um, I I look forward to another conversation with you another time. Of Of course. course. And And thank you. you. Thank you. And have have a very very good night. night. Thank you. You do the same. Thank Thank you. you. All right. right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This This is is Selwyn Collins saying good night. Thank you for listening. Have Have a a very, very happy happy Thanksgiving. And fear not not what fear whispers to you. Fear your obedience to it. it.